America, India has unnecessarily got itself pushed to the corner in COP. Um, India is, uh, we definitely as Indians want our government to do a lot more on the environment at home. But when you look at the world stage, India is in no way a climate uh, culprit. It is also not a climate renegade as compared to the large players who are today posing to be the climate leaders of the world. Those other countries who have both contributed to the problem that is today, who are still denying their responsibility, running away from words like loss and damage, and refusing to contribute either money or technology or vacate carbon space. And that's the dialogue that Paris should have had. And I think India has become um, um, a convenient whipping boy for uh, the Western world who wants to deny its own responsibility and certainly would like to make sure that another country like India becomes the, um, the, the, the focus of all global attention. And I think it's unfortunate that we've allowed it to happen. Let me make it first very clear what is it I want and then, yeah, and maybe just like and then talk about what I think could, will come out of this. We definitely want an ambitious deal, a deal which is iron ambition because it forces countries to take meaningful reduction targets based on their contribution to creating the problem and I mean meaningful. It means drastic reduction and reduction that is actually um, um, real. Um, two, we definitely want the deal to be equitable. So what we want is to operationalize the principles of equity through the sharing of uh, carbon, the remaining carbon budget. Uh, so we would like the draft to have an explicit reference to the fact that both countries' actions and the review of their actions will be based on their on the fair share of the carbon budget. Three, we would like a very strong, and I and I would like to underline this, a very strong commitment to loss and damage because it is very very clear that large parts of our world are today being hit by climate change. Um, we have huge devastation, whether it's our farmers of India, whether it is what we've seen in Chennai last week, and we need these losses to be calculated. We want attribution, and we definitely want damages to be to be talked about at the global stage. It is only when the world understands that what is the loss and what is the damage to be paid that I believe that you will see a regime which is real and effective when it comes to climate action. That's what I would like. But what I see in Paris today is an amazing coming together of the large polluters whether under the umbrella group, a group which was still now always in the doghouse for not taking its action seriously, um, it has managed to clean up its act, and I'm only talking about its act because it hasn't cleaned up its real actions, but it has definitely managed to clean up its act by getting its own civil society, that is the U.S. civil society, the U.S. media, to be um, uh, to be with it in its um, in its lack of action, and so there's a huge public relations exercise that is happening in Paris, where the large polluters of the world are taking leadership on the stage. And my problem with that is that these large polluters have still not uh, learnt uh, what they need to do to reduce emissions. So they're not walking the talk, but they're certainly talking and they're taking leadership. And that is worrying for all of us, should be worrying for all of us in the civil society, because that is not good for the future of climate action. It may be very good for the future of climate talks, because everybody could agree to do nothing, but it is not good for the future of climate action. And for people, for, for us who come from a country who is so vulnerable uh, to climate change, we need action now, we need drastic action, and we need meaningful action.